Blessed friends, welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we are going to continue our study of the Red Letter Series, and today we are in Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 11 through 19. So Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this is what defiles a man. Now you must understand how important this is for the Jewish people. It may not reflect such significance in the day and age that we live and maybe the places that we live, the culture that we live in, but for the Jewish people, it was very important, critical. It was the law as to what they allowed in their mouths and what they didn't. And yet Jesus, the Messiah here, as he's teaching them, says it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but it's that that comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. Well, now, again, imagine what they're hearing when he's speaking these things. They're not, I mean, Jesus said many times, you have ears to hear, but you're not hearing. And so they're not thinking spiritually. They don't know where Jesus is going with this. You may be familiar with this story and you may know where we're already headed. But the only thing that comes out of the mouth that they can think of is the spittle or vomit or mucus or phlegm. And so he says it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. Verse 12, then came his disciples and said unto him, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? I bet they were. They had been taught their whole lives. It's all through the Torah and the writings of Moses. It's the law of God that we are to be very careful as the people of God what we put in our mouth. And Jesus seems to be attacking that teaching. And so it's no surprise that they were offended after they heard this saying. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Leave them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Why? Because people don't study on their own. People won't question what they're being told. They place all their trust, all their allegiance in their teacher. And if their teacher is a false teacher, then they're going to be a false student, a false disciple. And yet Jesus doesn't say here, leave the student alone. We're to do everything in our power to bring them out from under these false teachings. But as far as the false teachers... They are so far along the trail of corruption that it would be impossible almost to bring them back. And so Jesus says, leave them alone. And in verse 15, as Peter is so often known to do, he speaks up and he says, declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding or do you not have ears to hear what it is that I'm saying? He says, do you not understand that whatsoever inner ends at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the draught? So he's saying that food passes into the mouth, goes through the belly, and is expelled from the rear. But in verse 18, those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. That's what defiles the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. Now in Mark chapter 7, the list is a little bit more detailed, so let's take a look at that. Mark chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, evil plans, evil plots. Before sin is ever acted upon, it begins in the mind as a plan, as a thought. And so again, it says, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. This is where jealousy begins. This is where anger begins. This is where murder begins. This is where rape begins. This is where theft begins. And all the sins that you can think of, they begin in the heart of man. He says adulteries. He says fornications. And so we have both sexual sins in the marriage relationship and sexual sins outside of a marriage relationship mentioned here. Murders. And and what so often causes murder? Anger, jealousy. It could sometimes be caused by covetousness. And that's what he says in verse 32. Thefts, 
come from the heart. Covetousness comes from the heart. Wickedness comes from the heart. Deceit, lasciviousness, which is basically life without restraint. An evil eye, desiring and wanting things that others may have that you don't have. Blasphemy, which is slander and false witness. Pride, foolishness, all these things come from within and they defile the man. Well, the reason for this is explained to us in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. And so before we read this together, imagine it like this. You walk into a store. You see something that you want. The very first thing is obviously a thought created in your mind to take that thing, to steal it. Well, now that the thought is there, the desire is born and the desire becomes so strong that you begin to plot your course on how you're going to get that out of the store. And once you have conceived a plot, however how simple or elaborate it may be, now you are simply to act it out. Take whatever it is you want, conceal it, and remove it from the store. That's what you're going to see in verse 14 and verse 15 of James chapter 1. It says, Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's the thought in your mind, the initial thought. Then when that lust or that thought has conceived, has birthed itself, that's the plan. That's the plot on how you're going to carry out what that thought that's been created in your mind. It says, once that has occurred, it now brings forth sin. Why? Because you actually act it out. Now, of course, Jesus told us that the moment that is born into our hearts, not our minds, because we can expel a thought. But once it becomes a true desire in our hearts, whatever it is, now it is sin. We don't have to act it out to be guilty of it. Because in conceiving the plot, we have already acted it out many times. And as we conceive that plot and act it out and face different scenarios, we can see ourselves being caught and therefore we have to thwart being caught. So we recreate and redesign the plan, the plot, until it is perfect in our minds and now we carry it out, making it an action that we actually involve our body in. And you see the difference is the spiritual and the physical. And what Jesus is trying to get his followers to understand is is the physical isn't what is important to a spiritual God, to a spiritual kingdom. The spiritual is what is important to our God. And so our focus and attention doesn't need to be necessarily on our actions and what we do, but the very reason of why we do what we do. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Again, in verse 11, back to our text in Matthew 15, it's not that which goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but it's that which comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. Down to verse 19, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, he says, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's why turning over a new leaf, going to a substance abuse program or a drug treatment program or an alcoholic program, reading a book, going to a seminar, none of these things are going to change a man on a permanent basis. The only thing that will change a man on a permanent basis is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the freeing power of his spirit in a man's life that changes a man's heart giving him new desires, washing him clean by the blood that was shed on Calvary oh so long ago. And if he is clean and his heart has been cleansed, those things don't rest there anymore. Adulteries, fornication, drunkenness, covetousness, jealousy, anger, bitterness, those things aren't in his heart anymore. Therefore, they're not going to come out of his mouth. The blessing of God, the things of God, that's what's going to come out of his mouth. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. When it says corrupt, it's worthless, degrading, and idle. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good and a blessing for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. 
And that's not hard to do if our hearts have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, if our sins have been forgiven and washed away. So if we see these things that we've discussed today in our hearts, if we hear them coming out of our mouths, this is a heart matter, friends, we must take before the Lord Jesus himself. We must bow in humble surrender and ask his forgiveness and plead with him to remove these things from us. Well, friends, that's going to bring us to an end of our study today. I pray that you've been challenged. I pray that your heart has been touched. I pray that your intellect has been enlightened. And I pray that you leave this study a little closer to the Lord Jesus and a little bit more obedient in your faith. Now, as he wills, friends, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.